Hi, I'm Michelle Cardolfer from the Police Digital Security Center, and today I'm going to talk about how to stay cyber safe whilst working from home. And I will provide you with easy and simple steps that you can implement into your everyday life to ensure that you can work safely from home. So just a breakdown of who we are. For those of you who don't know, the Police Digital Security Center is a not-for-profit organization owned by the police crime prevention initiatives, and we're working in partnership with government, academia, law enforcement, and industry. Our aim is to help businesses reduce their risk to cybercrime and fraud by changing the notion that cybersecurity has to be complicated. Many cyber threats can be avoided by taking a few simple steps that are cost-effective solutions and even free. So you can even use these skills at home. Um, we can all play a part to keep in um, keeping our working environment safe. And of course, all of our advice is in line with the government's National Cybersecurity Center. So due to the COVID pandemic, a lot of businesses in a variety of sectors had to adapt the way businesses are being run, which resulted in the majority of us of having to move our work office into our homes. And while we were adapting to a new normal, cyber criminals were adapting to the circumstances as well, almost at a faster pace than the rest of us, and uh, began to use the pandemic to target businesses while they were at their most vulnerable. And just to give you an idea, since the start of the pandemic, cybercrime has globally risen by 600%. So why could this be? Well, as I just mentioned, as we move from a work environment to a home environment, our attack surface has become much bigger, making businesses more vulnerable. So that can lead to um, data um, can be easily stolen or lost in the transition. Um, Personal devices do not meet the same security standards as the work devices. Then there is recreational activities um, is mixing quite easily with professional activities, providing more opportunity for malware infection from insecure websites um, to happen in social engineering methods of attacks such as phishing um, and smishing to happen as well. And then, of course, um, there's exposure to external hardware connections, which can lead to um, data transfer or removal and malware infections as well. The good news is that there are several easy and simple steps you can take to keep yourself, your business and your home safe and reduce the likelihood of a cyber attack or breach from occurring. So here are our top tips that you can do. The first one is securing your online accounts by using um, strong password security, which is essential for any business to keep their data and information safe. And here's a few things that you can do. The first one is using three random words. One of the main reasons that make it very easy for cyber criminals to hack into a device or system is a weak password. Having strong passwords is essential. We always recommend using three random words like conditioning future rabbit in this example. Um, and of course, if you want to spice it up, uh, maybe use a different word in a different language, such as we've used here rabbit in French, which is lapin. And as you can see in the infographic, we tested out to see how long it would take for a computer or hacker to guess a password. And the stronger your password is, the longer and almost impossible it gets to hack it. However, and this is crucial, do, you, do not use the same password twice, even as tempting as it is to do it. It really weakens your password. The second thing you can do is using a password manager. It's said that on average, each person has around 70 to 80 or more passwords. And if you follow best practice, which is um, you create a unique password for each single one of them like you should, then it's difficult to keep track of, then it's obviously very difficult to keep track of them. So we recommend using a password manager that stores all of your password and you have one master password that you need to remember to access it. 
um, make sure, of course, that you do not lose that master password. Um, there's also end-to-end -end encryption and two-factor authentication included in password managers. Um, and the good thing is some password managers can even auto-generate um, strong passwords for you in case you run out of ideas um, and will also highlight any uh, weak or reused passwords as well. And then lastly, um, well, second uh, last is using two-factor authentication. We recommend using it because it's an integral part of keeping your devices and accounts safe. Um, by needing two or more pieces of evidence to verify your identity and gain access to your devices or accounts, it makes it extra safe. So the first step is um, your password, which is something that you know. Then you confirm it with something that you have, which can be your phone, device, uh, code from an app or key fob. And then you're verifying it with something that you are, which is fingerprint scan or any kind of biometric verification. This just adds a extra layer of protection from hackers to gain access to them. And lastly, um, default passwords. Make sure that you always change all of your default passwords on your devices if there is one. So for example, your Wi-Fi router, your Alexa, make sure that you change all of them, all of the default passwords on those devices. We also recommend using a VPN, which is a virtual private network, so that you have a secure link to help protect and encrypt the data you send or receive to your work colleagues while you're working from home. It helps hide your data and it also stops cyber criminals from stealing it. And the good thing is that most VPNs will also have a uh, a feature to scan devices for malicious software. One easy and simple step that you can do is to update your software. Make sure that you set all of your devices and apps to download and install updates automatically to ensure that any crucial fixes or vulnerabilities are not missed, which will significantly reduce the risk of your devices becoming infected with a malware and it would also improve user experience. So as soon as you receive the notification to update your software, please do so as soon as possible. And one of the cases we like to mention here to show what could happen if you don't do this is the case of the cyber attack on a North American casino. In 2017, hackers used an interconnected fish tank, uh, which was at the casino, to steal information directly from them. The aquarium had sensors that were connected to a computer that monitored and regulated the water temperature, the cleanliness of the tank, and even controlled the feeding of the fish. So when a device is connected to a Wi-Fi, it becomes visible to other devices on the same Wi-Fi. So hackers could scan other devices for weaknesses in order to gain unauthorized access to them, which is exactly what happened in this case. The hackers managed to get into the system. They then looked for sensitive information and stole it from the casino. And no pun intended, but the hackers did turn out to be from Finland. So it's important to always update your software as soon as possible. Another essential um, tip that we always give is to back up your data. Uh, to safeguard your most important personal data and information, make sure you always um, back them up to an external hard drive or a cloud-based storage system to avoid any losses. Um, make sure that you keep backups separate from the network. Um, to also secure those backups with a strong password or two-factor authentication and to make sure that backups are encry encrypted at rest and in transit. This allows um, you to avoid losing any uh, important information. It also helps you recover very quickly from a cyber incident because you have a backup of all the information as well and reduces the amount of loss of information and um, helps you get back on your feet very quickly as well. 
One of the main things you can do to reduce your vulnerability to a cyber attack or breach is to educate and train your staff to be able to spot scams. Human error remains one of the main reasons why cyber criminals are successful with their attacks as they use these tactics, such as social engineering, to manipulate people into clicking links or downloading a malicious attachment to gain access into the network and steal their information. Therefore, it's essential uh, for any business to make sure that um, you and your staff are aware of the respons responsibilities you have when you handle sensitive data and information that is stored um, uh, within your device or network. And as I mentioned, phishing is one of the main methods used, uh, which is why it's important to train your staff to spot phishing emails so that they know to, they know what to look out for, what the procedures are when they receive such an email, and who to report it to. It's equally as important to educate your staff around the topics we've covered today, so password security, backups, and other topics like using and installing antivirus software or firewall on all of your devices, or for example, making sure your staff are browsing the internet safely and only accessing legitimate websites. So we recommend to regularly educate your staff on the most common types of scams used to target businesses and to give them the right tools to defend themselves from it so that you reduce your risk of becoming a victim of a cyber attack or breach. And lastly, communication. Ensure that you're maintaining contact and staying engaged with your team either via email or the chat platform that you're using as it is really easy to feel isolated or lose focus when working at home. Additionally, keep in touch of important things as well especially if there's a phishing email that has come through, it's important to keep the team notified of any important information or news. So stay engaged with the team, always keep in contact, use email or video call to speak to your teammates. We hope after this presentation, you will now be able to work more safely from home. But just to recap here, the main takeaway points you should implement to stay safe. Use strong passwords and have a good password hygiene, such as using password managers and changing your default passwords. This will keep your devices and accounts safe from being easily hacked. Whenever possible, use two-factor authentication on all your accounts and devices, because this will add an extra layer of protection and makes it difficult for a cyber criminal to access your sensitive information. Use a VPN to have a secure link to help protect and encrypt the data you send or receive to your work colleagues while you're working from home. Also, always update your software as this will patch any vulnerabilities that have been found and make sure to set it automatically so that all your apps and devices are updated as soon as a new software update is available. Also ensure to back up your data on a regular basis and set it up so it's done automatically. Don't forget to educate and train yourself and your staff to be able to spot any types of cyber scams that are out there. And additionally, install and activate antivirus software on all your devices, preferably set it up to update automatically because this will help you to run a complete scan of your system and check for any malware infections. And also only visit trusted websites to avoid malicious um, or scam websites, especially when online shopping. Keep an eye out on websites um, that have a padlock sign in the address bar as this shows that the connection and your personal information, for example, the credit card information being sent through is encrypted and secure. However, please do make sure that the website is legitimate as they are cyber criminals that have been using this new method to try and scam people in providing their personal and financial information. And then of course, during this time, social media might be used more often for businesses to communicate to you to their customers. It is therefore important to review the privacy, password and security settings for all of your social media accounts to make sure they're as secure as possible. And then lastly, make sure to always stay in communication with your team. 
whether via email uh, or via video call to make sure that you pass along important information such as if there is a phishing um, email that has landed into your inbox. If you want to have more information on the topics we've covered today or in any other cybersecurity topic that might be of interest to you, please visit our website at policedsc.com and head over to the advice up. We have a number of infographics, checklists, blog articles and videos for free to give you all the advice and information that you need. The Metropolitan Police have some great resources as well, such as the Little Book of Big Scams guidebook and videos to explain some of the most common scams and give advice on how to avoid falling victim to them. Thank you for joining me today. Do check out our resources at policedsc.com and if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us at contact at We look forward to seeing you again next time.